Hello everybody, I am Chantelle and welcome to another video. A lot of you have been asking where the USWDGC video is and we were not planning on putting a video out so we didn't film too much but Chris did film my rounds and we decided that I will go over my rounds with you since you so nicely asked. So since we played the same course four times in a row I think it'd be very boring if I just put all of the clips together and you saw every single shot from every round. So one through three I'll go over kind of what was going on throughout the rounds and then round four we will go over shot by shot so you can see the hot round of the day. So going into US Women's I was super excited. I love US Women's. I love meeting all the new people. There's over 300 women traveling all over the world to come to this one special tournament so I don't know what it is. I just love US Women's. It's my favorite tournament to play in and since it's a major it's very important and I just really wanted to do well. I did well the year before and I wanted to improve upon what I did last year. My friend Kat Johnson also came down from Canada to play in US Women's so we got a lot of practice in and we quickly noticed that this was going to be a very forehand dominant course and we are not forehand dominant people. <laughs> we also noticed that this course was really hard. It's a new course. It's a great course, don't get me wrong, but it definitely needs to be worked in a little bit more. Throughout our practice rounds, I noticed that I wasn't getting there for many birdies, but I thought that if I played super clean and got a couple birdies throughout, that is probably how I was going to place well. So the first round couldn't have been any better. I got to play with Kat and I just felt nice and calm and ready to play the tournament. It was a little bit windy, but nothing that you couldn't manage. So I started off pretty clean. The front nine, I got two birdies and one bogey, so I was one down through the front nine. I was throwing pretty consistently, I was hitting my lines, and my putting was pretty good. I saved a couple good pars, which always feels really nice when your putting is just helping you out. The back was kind of back and forth. I bogeyed a couple holes, and then I birdied a couple holes to bogey, and then I birdied again. So I was even on the back. So I finished the first round at a negative one, which was rated at 982, and I was so happy with this. That put me tied for 8th place. So being in the top 10 in a major after the first round, I was just so happy because I felt like I left so much out there still and that I could get an even better score. So I was really excited to get the next day going. So moving on to day 2. Day 2 we had pretty calm conditions, but I noticed early on that I was early releasing all my backhands. At Sprinkle Valley, you cannot be early releasing your discs because if you are off the fairway, it really sucks. If you're not hitting your line, it really sucks. So you have to be pretty precise when playing here. So the front nine was pretty terrible. I had three bogeys and a double. So a plus five through the front nine. I was not happy with that and I didn't get a single birdie to make me feel better. <laughs> but I kept my head up high and finished at a plus one through the back nine. So two bogeys and one birdie. I'm not exactly sure what was going on. My putting was still pretty decent. I just couldn't throw the disc straight. So I was having trouble with my confidence and once my confidence goes, usually I start to spiral and I get more bogeys, but I'm, I'm actually very happy with how I handled it. I kept the back pretty clean. I finished the round at a plus six, which I was not happy with. It was still above my rating though at a 943. I went down seven places, leaving me tied for 15th going into round three. So going into round three, I did not want what happened the day before to happen today. I did not want to be early releasing my discs and not being able to figure out why I'm doing that. So me and Chris went to a field that was close to our Airbnb and I threw most of my bag and just made sure that I was throwing hard and straight. So when I got to the course, I was confident that I knew how to throw my disc straight. So I felt like I was doing pretty well. I got some bogeys, I got some birdies, and I was back and forth. I was plus one through the front nine. Not terrible. There's some birdies in the back that I can get, and I was doing much better than the day before, so I was feeling okay. I was still putting pretty well, but I did miss a few short ones that kind of threw me off my game. I didn't feel like anything was wrong with my putting, I just missed a couple short ones, so I was like, oh maybe I wasn't focusing enough, I'm not sure what was going on. It's just weird when I miss like a 10 footer. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you feel this way, but I just, I hardly have to think about my 10 footers anymore. So when I miss one, I, I just blame it on a lack of focus. So then heading into the back nine, I got one bogey and one birdie, finishing it on even in the back and put me plus one for the round. 
That was rated a 967. With the plus one, it moved me down three spots, so I was tied for 18th going into the last round. I was still in a better placement than I was the year before, so I was reaching my goal so far, I just needed to put together a solid round the last day to keep my placement. Now the last round is where I was getting a little bit worried because it was supposed to be so windy and I was just not looking forward to it. From Windsor, Ontario, a presenting prodigy guest of this republic, please welcome Jack So the last Hill. round of a major, it is super windy out and I am full of anxiety. Hole one is like a super intimidating hole. You have to hit a triple mando, keep your disc super straight, and definitely not go right, but going left there can be trouble as well. My disc didn't land perfectly in the middle, but I do a sidearm pitch up and I'm just making my way towards the basket, trying to get my par, because a par on the first hole, I was completely fine with that. And taking a par on the first hole every single day, I was extremely happy with that because I feel like that hole can get out of hand. Oh, yeah. So hole two, it is just a sidearm and yeah. then hopefully you land in the middle and it's another sidearm or backhand. I went a little bit too right so I have a oh. sidearm <laughs> up to the pin. I super early released that but it somehow gets <laughs> through that tree and I have a putt for the birdie. I have not birdied this hole yet this weekend so I was really licking my chops and I completely airballed the basket. That was... Uh, kind of weird but i'm in for par <laughs> which is fine but i really wanted to get that birdie at least once hole three it's a pretty simple 300 foot hyzer shot throwing my fx3 yeah. and i hit the gap perfectly and i'm up there for a putt and i hit that one and it felt good because i completely airballed the last one so i'm like oh yeah okay i know how to put game on <laughs> now this hole has been my nemesis. I don't know what it was, but I kept early releasing and hitting that tree and just being in a terrible spot. So I switched my disc to my F5 and I finally hit the gap. And this is basically as good as I can get. This is a very long, challenging hole. So to get my par, I was thrilled. It was basically a birdie for me. <laughs> and onto this hole, this is definitely a birdie hole. I'm doing a sidearm with my D2, just trying to stay right in the middle of the fairway, away from the OB on the right, which is kind of scary about the sidearm because it can skip over that way. But I just found more success doing the sidearm. And then I just have a straight shot to the pin. Don't hit a tree, there is OB in that little gully in between where you're throwing in the green. And I got up there just outside the circle looking at a birdie and I completely airballed again. So this is really weird. I don't like airballing anywhere from circle's edge and in. <laughs> so that was a little frustrating, but I tapped in for the par. Okay. This is another hole that you do want to at least get a putt at and I just put it a little too wide. I hit that tree and it leaves me here. So I'm just pitching up and taking an easy par. Again, pars are good here, so I was completely fine with that. This hole, I do not like this hole. I had such a hard time for some reason. In practice, it was fine. I was getting pars very easily, but I was just having trouble with this upshot here. I kept hitting a tree, leaving me in a bad spot. And so I was really hopeful to get the par on it this day. And I just left that a little bit too wide, but I do have a pretty standard approach to the basket. And I left my distortion a little bit shorter than I wanted, but it is in and I finally got the par. I got it the first day and I messed it up for the last two days, so I was really happy with that. This hole is my favorite hole in the course, not because of the actual hole, but because the Dutch bros set up a tent right next to that hole and you got to have a little break, get some coffee, or what I got every day was the strawberry lemonade. Oh, it was so amazing. And what made it even better is I birdied it. So, best hole ever. <laughs> Next, we are here on hole nine. This is also a very birdieable hole, but it is very tricky. You can, you have to land in the perfect zones. And I finally got my disc to the perfect zone and I got a funny skip off of a twig and it left me with this upshot. So I'm just pitching up, trying to take my par and move on because pars are good. <laughs> so that was the front nine. And currently I'm sitting two down, no bogeys, feeling really good. I missed some putts. 
so I have some out there still but I'm feeling pretty consistent and now we're on hole 10 and I don't know what it was about this hole very easy straightforward hole and I did not get it all weekend I part it every day <laughs> now this hole hole 11 there was always a backup and it is a very tight gap and so every time you would get here there'd be like three cards you cool down and then you have to throw this tiny gap and it was really difficult I was throwing a backhand which worked well in practice but for some reason I just kept pulling it to the right so I decided you know what I'm gonna do a sidearm off the tee and it worked out way better and I actually got down here for a birdie look and I had a tailwind and it just knocked it out of the sky. I think that would have went in if there was no wind, but <laughs> at least I dropped in for a par. Hole 12, 330 feet. You just got to throw it dead straight. You can't go left. You can't go right. It just has to be perfectly straight. And I'm looking at this. We're wide open. It is windy, but I really want it. And it was just good enough. It hits the top of the basket and falls in for a birdie. So hole 13, it's 580 feet par four. You have to hit a very straight gap. If you go right or left, you will be in trouble scrambling for a par. And it's hard to get your par if you're not in the middle of the fairway. So I was kind of tucked to the right and I had this weird sidearm, which I left two inside. I thought it was good, but it was two inside. So I was kind of pinched again, threw another sidearm, hit a tree. So now I'm pitching up and looking at my first bogey of the round, which really sucked because it would have been cool to go bogey free here. <laughs> but I have a couple strokes to work with, so I wasn't too mad at the bogey. Next hole is 280 feet. You gotta turn it a little bit and then have it fade back towards the basket. I early released this and ended up here, and I hit a great putt, taking away that bogey that I just got. Now this is one of the other very hard holes. It's 590 feet, but it's very specific shot shapes and you have to land in the perfect zones. I threw my D4 and it just didn't turn enough. So I keep I keep getting pinched off over on this side and I'm just doing a little sidearm with my F5 trying to get to the middle of the fairway so I can pitch up and take a par because a par on this hole, I was happy with. I mean, I got it the first day and I was like so happy. I did not think that I would be able to get this hole, but a par is also really great. So hole 16 is 650 feet, par 4, and it is difficult. You're throwing out of this gap, and there's OB right and left, and the wind is like whipping out there, and you don't really know what it's doing. It's kind of swirling around, but I threw my disc pretty well, landed me here, and I'm just trying to get pars from here because I know my round's pretty good, and I don't want to do anything stupid to ruin that, so I'm just pitching up, pitching up, trying to take an easy par, and I did a pretty good job of that. So hole 17, it is whipping wind. I don't even know what the wind was doing. I think it was like a headwind right to left. So I threw my D1, my most yeah, stable disc, perfect. and I just made it over that little wall there. And I basically parked for a tap in, which felt so good because this is either a birdie or bogey hole and I got a birdie on it. So that's another birdie to the scorecard and I'm feeling so happy. And then hole 18 comes, we have a couple card back up. So again, you're just waiting, watching the wind go back and forth. <laughs> and I threw my D1 again, just keeping it stable, low to the ground. And it landed me in the middle of the fairway. And then this one, I threw way too high, but I'm safe. And that's all I want. Just want to get out of here with a par. So I pitched up to here and I'm throwing my M4. This M4 has been doing this shot so good. It just flies perfectly straight and gets me right up to the wood for basically a tap in. But I left this one a little short. And at this time I knew I was doing really well. And I was like, okay, if I think I have to make this putt. It probably matters. And I left it a little bit low and it bounces out of the basket. So that was really... That really sucked to miss that last little putt because that was for a top 10 finish at a major. And unfortunately, I missed it and I was tied for 11th, which honestly is still amazing and I'm so proud of myself, but it would have been very cool to get that put in and have a top 10 finish. So that last round I finished at a negative three. That was rated a 10-10. And I was so happy, but also so sad that I missed that last putt because that was the putt that I needed to get in to have a top 10 finish on a major. So 
yeah I know that I still did really good and I'm really proud of myself but missing that little putt just was like it sucked so bad knowing that it was just a little 15 footer and I needed a little bit higher but nope I missed it <laughs> so I ended this event tied for 11th 976 rated which I think is my highest event average ever and I am just so happy that I was able to do it at a tournament that I was so excited for it was so important to me and I proved to myself that I can do it. I can do anything I put my mind to. <laughs> okay, so that is it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed, and we will see you in the next one. Bye!